This is Erin from Canada, who works in the TLP Canada Teaching Learning Partnership. And um, I believe she's going to do something very exciting today. She's going to be doing some hosting some cool team panels today. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to you, Erin. She is very innovative and very exciting. I'm sure this is going to be a very exciting talk. Thanks so Erin. much, Melissa. It's great to see you. Good morning from Canada. Julie and Dr. Melissa. Um, yeah, no, it's a real honor to have the opportunity to share a bit about some of the exciting initiatives that have happened recently at the Learning Partnership uh, in response to COVID-19. But I would also love to emphasize in response to a strategic plan that we actually initiated pre-COVID-19, which um, among the many silver linings in this really tragic um, chapter, um, uh, COVID has, has, has um, catalyzed our leaps forward towards our ultimate vision and goals as an organization. So I think today I'm going to illustrate one of the ways how. Um, welcome questions as I'm going. Um, this is a, a massive undertaking for our organization, something we're really proud of. Admittedly, one of my favorite things to talk about, and I recognize I'm close to it, so it might get, um, confusing. Um, hopefully not. Anyway, as I mentioned, I'm beaming in today from Toronto, Canada, uh, where I'm the National Director of Development at the Learning Partnership. The Learning Partnership programs Canada-wide. Our headquarters, though, are in Toronto. Um, and where I live in Canada, we have a tradition of honoring the original caretakers of our land. And before I dive into telling us more about Take Our Kids to Work Day 2020, bigger, better, virtual, I wanted to take a moment and recognize that Toronto is located on the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And as I mentioned, our work spans coast to coast to Canadian coast on the traditional territories of even more nations and greater Indigenous peoples, both recorded and unrecorded. And we recognize the presence and endurance of all of these Indigenous peoples, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work and play together to provide inclusive innovation education programs to ensure a land that is well kept and peaceful for all well beyond our lives here. So I'm going to share my screen, if that's okay, for perhaps the most underwhelming looking presentation of GIFT uh, this session. Well, what, for what is not on screen, it is made up in you, Erin. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so take our kids to work day, bigger, better, virtual. I thought I would uh, walk us through today, giving us a bit more background or context about the learning partnership, who we are, and how Take Our Kids to Work Day fits into the scope of the work that we do and feeds into the mission and vision of our organization, as well as some history about where we're coming from going into 2020, which was like in so many places an unprecedented year for this program. Then I thought I'd dive into what does bigger, better virtual even mean, and then highlight some key takeaways. So here we go. The Learning Partnership is a Canadian organization that seeks to inspire and equip today's students to become tomorrow's problem solvers and change makers. We offer a suite of experiential innovation education programs that are designed specifically to, um, to illuminate or animate the mandated curriculum expectations across all the provinces in Canada with a focus on kindergarten to grade eight students. And then we offer Take Our Kids to Work Day in grade nine, which similarly articulates the curriculum there. The other thing our programs are designed to do is to really pump up the global competencies, or we call them the six C's. Here I go, I've just done it. I, I'm gonna get stumped. Creativity, critical thinking, citizenship, character development and self-directed learning, um, collaboration and communication, Nailed it. Not bad before a cup of coffee. Um, we really also rely on um, demonstrating those skills because of the um, mutual interest across sectors from educators 
to the public sector, to the private sector, in cultivating students who have these global competencies or skills for the future in order to ensure that they individually thrive in the future, that they're prepared to enter the workforce, whatever that looks like in the future, as we know jobs are changing rapidly and the landscape of the workforce is going to be very different in 2030 than it is today. Um, and also to reflect um, the investment of our private sector in illuminating this. Now, Take Our Kids to Work Day was actually the first ever initiative that was launched the Learning Partnership when we were founded in 1994. And it so fulsomely articulates the shared interest in um, and, and, and shared investment really in preparing students for the future and a rallying of all these sectors, education, public and private. <clears throat> The model was inspired by an event that our founding CEO heard of um, that was actually started by Gloria Steinem and some collaborators uh, in the USA, which was called Take Our Daughters to Work Day. Um, and that initiative continues and has become more expansive and more inclusive as well. Um, and it really, as I mentioned, um, reflects our ethos at TLP. It's an innovative way to address the shared goals across numerous sectors. Since 1994, so this is a lot of years now, Take Our Kids to Work Day has become the most recognized career education event in Canada. Every year, approximately 200,000 grade nine students visit a workplace on the same day. It happens to be the first Wednesday of November um, as we program it. We work very closely with our educator partners across the country um, who are administering this program and, and taking on the nasty logistics of getting students out of class and into the real world for that day, shadowing their parents or guardians or friends. Um, we work closely with workplace hosts who open their doors and give the students a really great look at what they do and the types of opportunities they can look forward to in the future. And of course, the government who provides support as well. This is really about building bridge from the classroom into the real world. In some ways, it's the send off of TLP's initiatives as a whole and an opportunity for students to see how the um, skills that they develop in experiential innovation education are applicable to the jobs that they, um, that they get to see that day. What's really key is that the event empowers volunteers to all chip in and prepare students for their futures. We expose students to careers they're curious about or perhaps ones they haven't considered yet. We connect students to like-minded peers and prospective mentors, and we give students the valuable chance to step out of the classroom and to experience the workforce. But TLP can't do that all alone. We depend on thousands of workplaces and thousands of volunteers to galvanize around this great cause. Um, over its lifespan to date, uh, approximately 4 million students have participated, which is a staggering number. I will admit I am one of those 4 million. I participated when I was in grade nine. Take Our Kids to Work Day notoriously was the day in my life I realized I was not going to be a lawyer. And here I am now with the great privilege of getting to be part of Take Our Kids to Work Day. Now 2020, like everywhere in the world, was impacted um, at TLP, we were impacted by the realities um, that COVID had, um, um, had, 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 had put on, onto all of our sectors and all of our realities. Um, and we realized that we couldn't rely any longer on students just on their own going out into the workforce. And we really needed to respond to what was going on. So um, phase one, I'll admit, was we rallied um, the great will and massive generosity of our lead national partner, RBC Future Launch, that's the Royal Bank of Canada, who are hugely invested in preparing students for the ever-changing future. Um, so there's great compatibility, wonderful expertise, and huge generosity there. And we were so thankful that they stepped up and stepped in to fill the space that we saw in terms of what students needed this year for a meaningful Take Our Kids to Work Day experience. Then we were able to actually bring on board for other supporters from various sectors. Um, but before we actually took action, the first thing we did was we reached out to our educators and asked what they needed. 
what we heard was that they needed very different things. Some provinces were back in school or expected to be in person learning by November 20th. Other provinces expected to be fully virtual. Others expected maybe a bit of A and a bit of B. Nobody fully knew, but we knew that every possibility was um, potentially going to be our reality when the event came. Similarly, workplaces were finding themselves in uncertain and various situations. So what we realized based on this audit that was that we needed to do something that was flexible, that was modular, and that was accessible so that as many students across Canada could participate as possible. And here's what we did. We came up with a model that was really based on five virtual components. <clears throat> The first was a pre-recorded cornerstone event. It was hosted by an RBC um, Olympian named Erin Latimer. Very honored to share my first name with her. She's an awesome Paralympic multi-medalist skier um, from Canada. And she led us through this 20 minute session that gave us a good um, look at a scan of all the different types of sectors that we were featuring throughout the day. So we got to see some bits and bobs of um, a simulation center at an Ottawa and hospital. We heard from skilled trades um, folks in New Brunswick, uh, a hairdresser who had actually come from a very diverse and inspiring um, career trajectory, non-linear to get there. Um, we heard from um, bankers and, um, and, and, and consultants and an amazing innovator and entrepreneur who's created an accessibility app that has just won her multi um, awards and tons of recognition. Um, and she's a real game changer up here, um, up here being in Canada. Um, and it was it was really um, a very fast paced, captivating, um, high level scan of many of the career opportunities and program opportunities that we were featuring throughout the day. In addition to this, we offered four breakout sessions that were streamed in real time, live, um, and, and um, featured different sectors, each of them. And these were offered twice per day, recognizing the fact that we were trying to be as inclusive as possible for the varied um, time zones that we see across Canada. Um, and again, these were each about 20 minutes long so that they could be used in bite-sized pieces in a modular way to plug and play into a schedule. One of these was based on skilled trades, so it featured folks from hydro sector and from, um, we had our friend um, Michelle from New Brunswick, who's the hair stylist, um, as well as other um, skilled trades professionals. Uh, and it was um, a panel that was hosted by one of our partners uh, from an organization called Safe Work Manitoba, uh, who are invested in workplace safety. And they had a really dynamic conversation about the trajectories of their careers and their reasons for going into the skilled trades sector um, and, and their varied practices. We also had a really exciting and captivating innovation and entrepreneurship panel, which was actually hosted by Kathy Dong, who is um, a gift uh, um, past participant. She's one of the alumni of a TLP program called iCubed. She's an amazing innovator. She's one of the teens on our panel. She'll be facilitating later today, actually. Um, and she was hosting very well established and celebrated innovators and entrepreneurs and posing questions to them inspired by from the audience. Then we had a healthcare um, skilled, um, sorry, breakout session that was um, a hands-on look at the life in a simulation center at this um, Ottawa hospital. And um, it was fascinating to hear more about some unconventional career pathways and skilled trades and the importance of technology within their work. And then of course we had um, a finance and technology rooted um, uh, experience, which was really, really hosted by our friends at RBC Future Lunch and showcased the great young talent that they have uh, in that, in that um, workforce and the opportunities for those kids. Um, each of these sessions was recorded. All five of them still live on TLP's um, YouTube channel uh, and can be accessed at your convenience um, and I think provides some pretty exciting intel into career pathways, opportunities, and diverse mentors for our young people.
people. Now, one of the things that we realized was as we were fleshing this out and really locking in some details, um, we were hearing that there was demand for questions and an opportunity for our kids to ask questions to people who were in the workforce. So we responded by launching um, what we're calling uh, what we called um, our career mentor initiative. So we reached out to our awesome network of supporters and beyond that, we have great friends at TLP um, through our history. And we sought folks who could provide additional intel based on these um, sector breakout sessions that we had identified. And we opened a portal for students to ask questions. And in response to their questions, they received um, career mentor advice, which is also shared publicly on our website. So there was a lot of different ways for students to participate in this day um, ongoing. And really it was designed to be a choose your own adventure model. So there was no pressure to do all of these components. It was meant to be pick and choose what you're curious about. And one of the things that I think is really important to emphasize is that it depended on educators, workplace hosts and parents entirely to unlock these opportunities for their students. While it would be ideal for us to be able to promote this directly to our youth audiences, the reality is that we're not able to for numerous reasons and policies. Therefore, we really um, outreached through our educator network and our workplace network as usual. And then this year, we also introduced an outreach strategy to parents, which we saw great uptake on. Um, so some learnings, some key findings or takeaways or stats or whatever. Um, first of all, we had about 6,500 workplaces, parents and educators register for the event. Um, throughout the day live, we saw just shy of 17,000 logins to the live events, representing over 144,000 student experiences from coast to coast. The views on YouTube continue to grow and are um, well over 11,000, which was the last recorded update uh, in December. Um, and we received also some great feedback on the day. Um, most notably, we saw that over 95% of workplace um, participants who responded to our survey and over 75% of parents who responded to the survey agreed that this was a useful initiative to prepare students for their future. And well over, um, and, and about um, three quarters of the students who responded to the survey also felt better prepared for their future after having participated. But there's some really um, key highlights that I just wanted to shine a spotlight on. One is that as the learning partnership focuses on accessibility and inclus um, inclusion, um, as we look forward to our strategic plan, this leap to virtual really, really um, put us on track in that way. And being powered by our partners at RBC Future Launch was massively critical in order to unlock this potential so quickly in response to COVID-19. We always saw virtual on the horizon in about three years. And Ms. Rona told us today was the day. And so we, we said, okay, and seized the moment. We know fundamentally that more students were provided more diverse career exploration on this day. We see in the feedback that um, students um, didn't realize that they might be interested in a skilled trades career, for example, but because they um, maybe were just filling time and participated in that um, breakout session are all of a sudden um, curious about the potential of those pathways. Um, we also heard overwhelmingly that some students who were unable to participate in the historic model that was dependent on recognizing or identifying a place to go shadow or a person to go shadow um, on that day suddenly had an option um, that gave them some exposure to career pathways and mentors as well. We received amazing letters from, um, from big, um, big, big cities, metropolises in Canada as well as more remote locations celebrating this opportunity. A huge other lesson is the importance of collaboration. Um, we knew this was impossible at the gates on our own. We have always depended on the goodwill and galvanized volunteerism um, across the country and across sectors. Um, and 2020 was really 
um, the, the, I would say it highlighted that necessity even further. We saw volunteers get messy with us and figure it out. As we designed this and put it into action, we recognized opportunities to bring other specialists in. For example, live events is hard <laughs> virtually. We didn't even realize the complexity of it necessarily at the gates. And as we saw those uh, registrations grow and grow and grow, we, um, we realized we really needed to enlist some help and were able to find support and learn with those specialists as well. Um, and then um, I think as we look ahead, one of the key things that we know um, is that we need to continue to lean into this career mentor experience, for example, and find other ways to increase the interactivity in this model um, and have some great ideas um, brewing behind the scenes as we start planning for 2021, which most ideally will include both the opportunity for students to go back into the workplace, as well as us supplementing with virtual programming um, in addition to those experiences. So that's a little bit about uh, what we did on Take Our Kids to Work Day 2020. I'd be happy to bring up some of the resources if that would be useful or if there are some questions. Those are some awesome numbers. Your participation yeah. numbers are just wonderful. I really think, while it, I'm sure it was a lot more work for you, Melissa, or uh, you, uh, Deborah, excuse me, and the whole crew, I think it probably opened up such greater potential for the kids to learn having it electronic because they, were, they, could, they weren't just going with their parent to the job that they probably hear their parent talk about already. They, it was expanding the horizons for them much more. So I think that's, 2020 has made it kind of cool. So, how do you, and, and I'm sorry if you covered this, how no did problem. you, how do you think what happened this year will change your um, program going forward? I think it fundamentally changes our program going forward. Um, I think this, as we were talking to folks, and this is before we had all the spe specifications and details in place, um, really this was an opportunity to reset our baselines and um, reestablish what it is the Take Our Kids to Work Day can provide our young, um, our young future workforce. Um, and I think um, with confidence that we will build from here. Um, and we look forward to the opportunity to reintroduce the historic model as well. Um, but in terms of our focus areas as an organization, ensuring that students have access to, um, to, to, to exploration beyond what's already within their immediate wheelhouse. Um, this, is, this is key to us achieving that goal. Erin, I think it's so cool that you were actually involved in this program as a student <laughs> and now you're working on it from the other side. That's such a cool thing and it must be really lovely for you to see how it's changed and how it's evolved um, in some ways out of choice and in some ways because you had to. I just wondered how how do you think that the experience impacted you as a young person and do you think that the experience that you had um, is how could you compare the experience that you had to the experience that young people are now getting on this new virtual experience? It's a great question. Um, I'll say when I participated as a kid, I had no um, exposure to career pathways beyond the ones that my family represented. Um, and I think it really sparked my curiosity of what my options beyond those career pathways were when I spent a day at my father's law firm um, and was totally um, just not compatible with how they had designed the experience for me. And that was important learning. I think learning what you don't want to be is almost as important as learning what you do, especially as we watch the workforce um, or, or the landscape change so quickly, um, because we don't know what we can be when we grow up, never mind what we want to be. Um, 
So that was really formative. It was also formative to have the social opportunity to um, be part of um, a cohort of peers that I had not met before. And I think something like GIFT actually also are, um, represents that opportunity. Seeing people who think similar to you or have something in common with you was really important. Um, but what I don't take for granted also is that I was really privileged to have the access to that experience. Um, and that um, this new trajectory from TLP, unlocking and breaking down the barriers um, for equitable access um, is really what gets me stoked. Um, and our organization really um, motivated in order to step into this space. And regardless of little Erin still getting to go to the law firm next year with her dad, um, we're really um, more curious about what about that Erin who wouldn't have that opportunity and how can we supplement it for her? And from what you're saying um, about the virtual program that you ran in 2020, it sounds like young people weren't restricted to just hearing or having an experience of one career. They were able to hear from experts in various industries. And although they weren't there physically, they probably got more of a, a, a wider experience of a, a variety of careers, not just, okay, I went here and I liked this, or I went here and I don't want to be a solicitor, but they, they actually saw a wider range, although it was virtual, they probably, would you say that it was a, probably a um, a better, wider, like more of a range of um, careers that they were able to be exposed to. Absolutely. Uh, nailed, uh, hit the nail on the head, Melissa. And we actually, I would say, and this is anecdotally, I haven't shaken this data out, but that was feedback we heard um, mostly from parents as well, was their gratitude for um, the further exposure of diverse sectors for their young people so that they also were empowered and could have meaningful conversations about career pathways uh, with their students. But they were also still really grateful to be able to give their students a look at what they do so that they could better understand uh, who they are and what they're talking about. Um, so lots of great um, cultivation of, um, of, of conversations and discussions for sure. Um, and I'd also point out that we did um, supplement each of these um, breakout sessions with some educator resources or activity, um, guided activities um, in order to help some self-directed or teacher-led learning for the students based on the career pathways. So those tools continue to exist on our website in addition to links to the YouTube channel. I would highly encourage anyone who's curious to go check it out because I think there's some great stuff. And if you have feedback, please send it forward because we definitely are looking towards evolving and strengthening and growing this as we, um, as we start planning for 2021. Erin, could you show us a link to that? So that Gladly. And actually, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna pull up the website. Great. Um, oh, so this is the YouTube channel. So when you come to take our kids to work.ca, or if you just go to the learning partnership.ca, uh, you can find under take our kids to work day, this, um, this page here, um, the student survey won't necessarily apply any longer, but you can scroll down and find a link to the Cornerstone event, Your Future Now, which is really based on hope and resilience at a time when we knew grade nine students and students even beyond that could finally participate as well, um, needed to understand that um, the future continues to be bright and mostly thanks to our, um, our, our, our confidence in their potential. Um, and then we have links to the recorded breakout sessions as well. And each has an activity sheet also hyperlinked to it. And then as you scroll down, you'll actually see that there is um, a, a big picture educator guide, which is a rich Bible of um, context and content uh, through the educator lens. And if anyone's interested, we also have resources um, for parents as well as for workplace hosts, which um, articulated a bit more about how they could use the, um, the day and the programming. And then um, just celebrating our partners who are so generous in coming on board and enabling what happened this year. 
So the learningpartnership.ca is uh, a great place to start or You know, Erin, I think it's really great that um, you've been able to use this opportunity to expand what children are exposed to, because actually at the moment with the circumstances that most parents, a lot of parents, in, I don't know in, uh, what it's like in other countries, but here in the UK, unless your parents are key workers, so they're working in food or they're in medicine or they're teachers and they're having to look after key worker children, then everybody's working at home and their children are at home doing home learning. So you're kind of taking your child to work with you every day at home in the kitchen. So they're kind of get, getting a little bit more of that experience, uh, more exposure of what their parents do because parents are working from home, although they're working in a different way. The children are overseeing and hearing phone calls and Zooms and they're seeing what their parents are doing and some parents are getting their children more involved. So you've now had the opportunity to take things to the next level, really, haven't you? Not just a child experience, what's, experiencing what the parent does. They're now going to the next level and being able to see lots of other careers. I'm just wondering if maybe um, the title of the day you could evolve a little bit because it's not just take your kids to work day anymore, is it? It's, it's a lot more than that. You're doing that's a lot more. That's right. And I, I, uh, it's a great point. I mean, one of the other things, um, two, two comments. One was that I... I Personally, I hope that was the day. I mean, I saw a meme or a picture on Twitter or somewhere of um, um, a, a home office door with a poster on it that said, only open if like you're on fire, da 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 da. <laughs> and I get it. Parents must be so overwhelmed right now. And I have so much um, just respect and, 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 and awe for their ability to juggle these new realities as so many students are learning remotely as well. Um, I, I, I hope that this was the day that we opened the doors to our offices and let our students understand um, what was happening and start to have conversations and recognize the value, not only of the students doing their um, traditional curriculum work and their math and their science, but also having exposure to what mom, dad, guardian, neighbor, et cetera, are doing professionally and how formative that can be in them designing their own futures and making their next steps in their um, academic careers and beyond that. Um, and also the other thing that I think is worth highlighting is most careers, many careers are leaning towards technological evolution and embracing technology. So I think in some ways, um, the evolution of Take Our Kids to Work Day or whatever it might be named in the future um, to really embrace technology as being a vehicle to um, uh, productive learning and 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 connecting um, and meaningful connection um, is 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 a great reflection of that trajectory as well. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Erin. My total delight. <laughs>